You're watching CHCO TV's Gavel to Gavel coverage of the November 1, 2023 Special Council Meeting for the Municipal District of St. Stephen. I'm Florence Mitchell. In today's meeting, Teed Saunders Doyle will present the Municipal District's audited 2022 Consolidated Financial Statements. Council will then move to approve those financial statements. Now let's join Council in the Moosehead Room at the Garcelin Civic Center in St. Stephen. Okay, everyone, welcome to our special council meeting on November 1st, 2023 for a uh, special council meeting for the presentation of the audited uh, 2022 Consolidated Financial Statements by Teat and Saunders and Doyle. So first off, uh, call to order. Uh, before we begin, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that we are gathered today on ancestral unceded territory, the Pestumacati people. And I'd like to have a mover and seconder to approve the agenda. Uh, Councillor Heislip, Councillor Eastman. Uh, that the agenda for the special council meeting on November 1st, 2023 be approved. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried, thank you. Uh, any conflicts of interest? Okay. All right, so we'll move right in as long as they're ready to go, Jeff, for the presentation of the audited 2022. Well, here, I'll have a mover and seconder to move into the pres presentation of the audited 2022 consolidated financial statements by Teed and Saunders and Doyle. So Councillor Wright. Oh, Councillor Rodas. Okay. What's there? Megan, Andrew, you got us? We're good to go. Thank you very much. Hi there. Uh, I should tell you that I used to be the auditor for the town, uh, I think it was 15 years ago. Tim, Tim will know for sure. But, uh, so my brother Peter, who is your uh, partner from our firm, uh, is away uh, over in Europe for a little vacation. And so I'm mentioning tonight. Uh, my name is Andrew Logan, and uh, I also have on tonight with me, Megan Porter, who is the senior manager in the office responsible for your audit. So tonight's plan is to uh, briefly, uh, I know everybody wants to get home and watch the World Series end tonight, but um, briefly discuss the audit results for last year, um, and I'll take you a little bit through some of that information, and Megan is going to have some comments on the financial results. He went for the fiscal year in December 2022, so this is last year's information, but there's some some things here are worth noting and uh, some things will draw your attention to. If there are any questions uh, during this presentation, please stop and ask. Um, we'll, we're here uh, until you folks are satisfied with the, uh, with the information and ready to, to move them. So I don't know if uh, you want to bring them up on the screen. Would that be helpful? Uh, I think it might be, Andrew. You should be able to do a share screen if you set them up on your, on your end. Sure do. There we go. How's that? Everybody see that okay? Yes. Yep. Excellent. All right. Uh, I'll take you to the boring part first. This is the auditor's report. Uh, this is basically what you pay us to provide. Uh, the financial statements are prepared by the finance group, and uh, our job is to, uh, is to prepare this report based on our work. Um, it's a standard audit report. It's the same one that was was presented last year and past years. There's been one significant change to the wording or the layout. Uh, I think the, the important part is um, understanding the responsibilities. Uh, and in here, we do have uh, uh, those laid out for the council and in terms of the auditor's responsibility. I mean, basically, the preparation of financial information and statements um, is on the town and that's delegated to the finance group. It's our job to come in and based on our procedures um, and, and the results of those procedures to provide an audit opinion on the financial statements. Um, the audit opinion is provided. Hey, why does this say 2012? That's amazing. I was going to say that doesn't match what we're looking at on my screen. Like, <laughs> sure, so I'm gonna, I updated it this morning to November 1st. Maybe it's a format that we're in. I, I will correct that though. Okay, yeah. this is not the standard audit report. 
Um, the, the opinion paragraph is, is basically the same, um, but this uh, audit report is from, uh, uh, from the prior year. I guess the key thing here is these two paragraphs, which would be similar to the, to the real report. And what it tells the, tells the reader is that based on the procedures we performed during the course of our audit, we found no evidence of any theft, fraud, uh, any intentional errors, uh, and we found no evidence of any unintentional errors, which is a key thing. So intentional errors are the bad things, uh, and there are uh, things like theft and fraud as I mentioned. Unintentional errors would be things that are, are inherently wrong with your systems, with your accounting processes, and your function. We found no evidence during the course of our work that would suggest there are any problems in any of those areas. And accordingly, we, we expressed what we call a clean audit opinion, uh, which is really what you're looking for. Uh, you've got to remember that these financial statements that you're looking at tonight are, are based on public sector account money rules. I'm sure Peter's taken you through those in the past. There's almost two sets of books for all municipalities. Um, one is the public sector accounting rules, which dictate how these statements must look um, and provide a comparable uh, set of rules right across this country in terms of, of what these statements uh, and how they are prepared. There are also the second set of books, if you will, are the, are the funding model or what the province uses to, to set rates and, uh, and, uh, and to uh, assess the financial performance of the municipality. There are some disclosure notes at the back of the statements to sort of reconcile some of these differences, but it always causes a bit of confusion. I think the primary difference, and I'm sure most of you are aware of this, is that these statements include depreciation on your assets, whereas the, the funding model statements do not. And so that's a fairly significant number. The depreciation in these financial statements is around $2 million, and that's reported as an expense. So the, public sector, the, the funding model would not, would not do that. Um, Andrew, I think you may have the wrong set of statements open. These are, uh, these are definitely not the 2022 financial statements. Uh, Do you have the PSAS file open or the just regular? There's two, there's two files. Just give me one second here and I'll bring up the agenda because I believe the council package has, um, has the proper statements. Bear with me for just a second, please. Gosh, we're having some technical difficulties with my end. Give me a second there for a break.
balance sheet um, for those that are in the, the for-profit um, organizations. Now, this statement, again, is very subject to timing differences as we're just looking at a specific point in time. Again, it's December 31st. So a lot of these balances can change from year to year depending on when monies come in uh, for your receivables and monies going out for your projects under the accounts payable. Items that I probably highlight on here, um, of course, you'll see that that insurance proceeds that you had uh, for your balloon fire hadn't been collected before year end. So that's a new line item under your receivables this year for the 221000 and last year we had a large amount of five hundred and fifty thousand dollars that was uh, receivable from private developers that was for the lsd weston um, and cordova realty that had been received during the year so that's kind of your change in the receivables the other line item i would highlight um, would be you'll see under your tangible capital assets those increased um, by roughly 1.4 million. The largest addition in the current year would have been the uh, aerial fire truck that you guys had purchased. And that was um, roughly about 1.5 million cost of that. Um, and as I mentioned, so your capital assets, when you purchase those, they go in under as a non-financial asset on your balance sheet. Um, which is included in your cost under the tangible capitals. And as the, you make estimates on what the expected useful life would be for each of those assets, and the cost of it is amortized over the expected useful life. So you'll have at your end um, for this year, you had about 53 million would be the cost of those assets that had not yet been fully amortized. So when looking at your accumulated surplus number, um, which stayed pretty comparable to the year before, most of that balance, um, what that represents is your capital assets that have not been yet amortized at your end. Yeah, I did ask a lot in council meetings and, and social service commission meetings, you know, what does this surplus mean? Um, it, you know, in the for profit world, it would be the retainer, it would be the money we made over the history of our business that we've not we've not paid out to shareholders. This number is, is somewhat similar. This is a, a continuous surplus in municipal setting is really the money the town has invested in its assets. So as Megan pointed out, the town has historically put in eighty six million dollars into its assets. During the course of time, it's consumed thirty three million dollars worth of those assets leaving 53 to go forward. So those are roads and lagoons and fire trucks and all the things that have been purchased. This is the estimated value available for, for the future, which is the bulk of your surplus. And then there's a few other items, uh, inventory, some prepaid expenses and whatnot, some smaller amounts that have accumulated. So we've got $53.6 million of, of stuff to provide future value to the, to the residents of the municipality. And that is reduced by our net debt. So the net debt is simply our cash and the people that we put on hand minus our liabilities, including including any debentures or our standards. So overall, uh, almost forty nine million dollars worth of, of of future value, if you will, for the residents of the of this problem. Next speech, look forward to how they skip down to the state the cash flow manager. So this statement here summarizes cash in and cash out for the year um, to reconcile at year end uh, what your ending cash balance is. And the specific items to, to highlight, um, as we mentioned, um, there was the acquisition of your tangible capital assets, 2.1 million. Of that, the largest item obviously being the fire truck, which was 1.5, um, and then in these statements, we do recognize the expense uh, as capital assets are used, which is your amortization line, which is the 2.1 um, $2 million um, for your amortization. That would be the two largest 
line items as, along with um, you have your debentures with the province and during the year we repaid down $742,000 of that debt. I just want to skip down to the notes, Andrew. Just wanted to highlight um, this year with the municipal reform, uh, we did have to add a disclosure just to highlight um, for the town what local service districts you would have um, acquired with municipal reform. Um, there was a couple that you had fully would be incorporated and amalgamated as of January 1st, and then there was a few that was just portions that you guys had acquired with the reform. If there's any wording changes or anything to that grant or that you wanted to adjust, let us know, but I kind of just could use that based on the information that you gave me. I know for St. Andrews, um, where they had acquired some of their LSDs, they had also put in the note um, what their tax base and their population was going to increase by. Just a suggestion if you guys wanted to think about that. The last item I was going to go over, um, Andrew, would just be if we go to the Schedule 19 for the reconciliation of the annual surplus. Change is the headings. Not for this year. Not for this year? Oh, okay. Yeah, 2022 was. This is closing, this is closing out the town since season. Okay. Right, so January 1, 2023. Okay. I got you. <laughs> well, that's good. It's because we're already into you know, November 2023 to try to think back when it occurred. Um, as Andrew had mentioned earlier, um, part of the, the difference with the with there's kind of two funding models. So the top line that we have here is the surplus that we have disclosed in the financial statements, the 605,406. Now included in the, that number, of course, is your amortization that we're recognizing on the capital assets of the two point zero eight six nine hundred seventy six thousand so for the funding model for the province they don't recognize that amortization expense so we need to add that back um, which was included in the deficit above once we make these adjustments that are required by the province this leaves us with a surplus for the funding purposes of one point three million uh, forty nine thousand eight hundred and thirty one compared to 2021 uh, when I had looked that up we had four million seventy four thousand seven hundred ninety eight so that will be what the province uses in determining your funding for uh, 2023 and then that surplus will have to be brought into income um, in two years when you do your budget for the 2024, right? 2024. Because it would be two years from 2022. Uh, so that's, as I mentioned, kind of just a brief overview um, of the financial results for the year. I know kind of almost finished 2023, I'm kind of think back on 2022. Um, so I kind of open it up now to council uh, if there's any questions anybody had or any further details they'd like on the information that we've been over. Looks pretty quiet. <laughs> okay, you know, I just mentioned that uh, under the general law, you mentioned that 1.3 million uh, coming in in the second year. Uh, really, uh, there's only two items there that will come back into that budget. And one is a general operating fund, that $560,067. Okay, and the other is the water and sewer operating fund. Yes, yes, sorry. Okay. So 
So yeah, so there's no no questions of council. So yes. you're getting off easy tonight. Thank you for all your hard work, and uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Tim and Frank and their team for uh, making their job even easier by keeping all everything in line. And as they said, it was done well. So appreciate that, and and also to you, Jeff. Same part, you have to play in it as well. So. Yeah, but you got to manage people to make sure the numbers stay intact. So it's all part of it. So thank you. Oh, there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, Megan. Thank you. Okay. Something else I forgot to mention. Uh, Council Harding is out. She's not well. Uh, she's going to try to make it uh, next week for the next meeting, but uh, anyone just uh, give her thoughts and uh, prayers. And uh, hopefully she'll be back with us next week. She wanted to be here. And uh, anyway, she's healing up, and she'll be back with us soon. And uh, Deputy Mayor's away, too, for another, another cause as well. So. All right, so uh, I need a... Um, also, we got the next thing. Uh, okay, so we accepted the report. Next thing you know, we got. I need a mover and seconder for request a decision for the adoption of the audited 2022 consolidated financial statements presented by Teton Saunders and Doyle. Mm -hmm. Councillor Greenlaw. Second. Councillor Heislip. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And yeah, so yeah, so there's no, there's no other. Yeah, we're done. So uh, I need a mover and second to adjourn. So moved. Councilor Wright, Councilor Eastman. Uh, any questions on adjourning? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Can't imagine it. So anyway, here we go. Thank you, and uh, good night, everybody.